So then, you know, going back to the lesson on the linear algebra kind of mathematical preliminaries, we talked about how tensors and matrices are transformed through, through a coordinate transformation or rotation. And so if we're given S, so in this case, S is the principal stresses, S1, S2, S3, and it's diagonal, okay? Then we, are, we find RG via that equation, and then we just plug in RG transpose S RG, and that will give us a transform, that will transform the stress back into the geographic frame. So let's work an example. Do I get a calculator? So your angles are 0, 0, 90. Right? So I'm going to go back a couple slides, but remember that, 0, 0, 90. I'm going to go back to here so you can plug them in. Right? So alpha 0. Alpha is zero, beta is zero, gamma is 90 degrees, right? So what's the cosine of zero? One times the cosine of zero, one, one times one is one, right? This one has a sine of zero, which is zero, so that whole thing's gonna be zero. This has a sine of zero, so that's zero. Maybe you don't need your calculator. Right? This has a sine of zero. This has a sine of zero, so that's zero minus zero. This has a sine of zero. Now we have cosine of zero, which is one, but then we have the cosine of 90, which is what? Zero. Okay, now we have the the cosine of zero, which is one, times the sine of 90, which is one, right? So, so this guy is one. And um, we have another sine of zero, so that's zero. We have a sine of zero, so that's zero. We have a sine of zero, so that's zero. We have the cosine zero which is one and the sine of 90 which is one we have a negative sign out here so that entry is going to be minus one okay and then we have uh, the cosine of 90 which is zero so that's going to be zero right so so what we end up with for this problem is one zero zero. Zero, zero, one, zero, minus one, zero. Right? So back to the problem here. Right? Okay, so now um, we also need R transpose. It, it may be that in the linear algebra lesson I had written, well, the transformation would be like SG R inverse S R, okay? And I told you that all you know, we talked about that all unitary matrix matrices, their inverse is their transpose, and that's true for eigenvectors, right? If, if the eigenvectors are normal vectors, then you have a unitary matrix and its inverse is its transpose. Well, it's the same thing for rotation matrices. All rotation matrices are unitary, OK? 
Okay? And so their inverse is their transpose, which is nice because it's much easier to transpose a matrix than to find its inverse. But anyway, so we'll, we'll need the R transpose, and you know, um, that's just, we, we're just going to take the columns of RG and make them the rows of R transpose, right? So that's just 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 0. Right? And so then we need to do this multiplication. I like to do them one at a time. So we have S times R. So we're going to do this part first. S times R. Right, so S is just as it's written there. R is So we need to do this multiplication, right? So everybody remember how to multiply vectors? Or matrices, rather? So the first entry here is going to be the first column of this guy dotted with the first row of that guy. Right? So, so that's basically that the dot product of this vector with that vector. So that's just 30 times 1, and all the other entries are 0. Right? So it's going to be 30 there. Then this entry is the dot product of the second column of R with the first row of S. So that's clearly 0. right? The third entry is going to be the dot product of the third column of R with the first row of S. And that's, again, going to be 0. This entry, what is this entry? OK, in, in words, the operation there, just so you get it clear. It's the first column of this, of R, with the second row, right? And so that's going to be 0. And then the, the, this term here will be the second column of R with the second row, that's also going to be 0. And then what about the last one? The last column with the second row is going to be 25. And then I'll just write down the last row. All right, so that's SR. So then we need to multiply that on the right side by R transpose. Okay. So R transpose SR is. R transpose is this guy. If you work through it, then you get okay. So that is SG. Right. So you notice that. S, G, and S are different. Now, in this case, they both happen to still be diagonal, but that, that may not always be the case, OK? I think there's an example. I have another example that, that won't be the case. 
right? So one of the reasons I wanted to go ahead and type that in Mathematica was so that it would be there. <clears throat> because, uh, you know, this is a perfect candidate to, to you know, th this would take a long time to type in your calculator. How many of you have uh, programmable calculators, like a T80, TI-89 or an HP-40, like one of those, a, pr pr a calculator you can program? I imagine you all do. You just don't know you do. Because you probably never programmed it, right? But you could. I mean, I think um, just had a thought. Uh, we may take our tests on the computer, right? So that you can have that both. Because you know, I don't want you on a test to be stressed. It's, this is not hard, right? It's just literally plugging and chugging. But this is like a perfect candidate that if I, you know, I can write a function that just takes alpha, beta, and gamma and it computes this for me, and it'll always be right. And I, mean, I was going to tell you that you should program your calculator to do that, but if you don't all have that calculator, just to make things fail, you, you, may, you may take the test in the computer app. But anyway, so what I'm going to do, since I have it here, I'm just going to write a function real quick. And you know, I'm going to use Mathematica just because this is already here. Uh, I don't want to open up MATLAB since and retype all that other stuff. I already have the correct formula. And I'm just going to use Mathematica, but you could easily do this in, in MATLAB, right? So uh, I'm going to create a function that's going to take as arguments alpha, beta, and gamma. And then that function uh, is going to return the rotation matrix. So the module um, is sort of Mathematica's word for function. So pretty simple function. We have 0, 0 and 90 degree. The default is to use radian in, in Mathematica. That's right, right? That's what we got. Right. So, I mean, this is why I love computers. I, in the notes, gave you a test for any code you could write. It's a really simple code. It's a little function that computes the rotation matrix. And I gave you the correct answer. So if you can reproduce this answer, you should never get this wrong, ever. Okay. And I have, other I, mean, I have other examples. But um, so we could actually just go ahead and take it a step further. We could create another function. So. Uh, my new, I have another function that I'll call SG, and it'll take in the stress tensor, the the, the diagonal. Uh, well, I'm sorry. The, it'll it'll take in the stress, okay, and alpha. I'll just copy this. Alpha, beta, gamma. another function and I have a local variable RG and so inside this function I'm going to call the other one right, so I'm going to say RG is equal to that and, um, and then I'm going to return RG, the transpose of RG dotted with S dotted with RG. Okay. 
And so then let's call that function. So the stress was 30, 0, 0, 0, 0, sorry, 0, 25, 0, 0, 0, 20. Alpha out zero zero ninety degree. And I get back thirty, twenty, twenty five. Thirty, twenty five. So here here are the correct answers to test a, co a potential future code you're going to write. One that I just wrote. Okay. So now that we have a code, let's test it for some other problems. Okay. So my stress is 30, 25, 20, and I have 0 minus 9 to 0. Thirty, twenty-five, twenty. That's that's the same, right? Thirty, twenty-five, twenty. The angles are minus ninety, zero. The answers are twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Code works for that problem too. So now I have 30, 25, 20, and I have 90, 0, 0. So same stress, and I have 90, 0, 0. And the answer is 25, 30, 20. 25, 30, 20. Okay. So here's a little bit different one. I have um, 60, 40, 35. Sixty, forty, thirty-five, and one hundred and thirty-five zero ninety. I suspect my answers are not in rational numbers. All right, 47 and a half minus 12 and a half. Looks good. Minus 12 and a half, 47 and a half, 40. Correct. Right. And so, in th and this is a one case where you see that in all the other cases, while the, the transform stress, the stress of the geographic coordinates was also diagonal. In this case, it's not, right? We start with a diagonal, uh, and, and we end up with something that's a full stress tensor. OK? Uh, they'll all, uh, yeah, there'll always be a diagonal as long as these are non-zero. If one of these were zero for some reason, which would be odd in the Earth, but if it were, um, then you'd also have a zero there. But should be. I guess potentially you could have a zero there, but yeah, it should be. You have to look at the figure, right? It, it's positive as it's drawn on the figure, and that's why the sort of sign of the angles is so important. It's it's positive as it's drawn on the figure. So if I give you one of these problems, I'll always give you that figure, and the angles on that figure will never change. They. <coughs> They are in the, in the notes as they are in the book, and and so you just have to look at that. And I know, you know, last year when I taught this class, a lot of the students had to figure tr tr trouble trying to figure out which rotation was which. If that's the case, go back and look at the, you know, I did, I worked through the example of the three isolated rotations, right? With that, you can clearly see which, you know, if you look at them in isolation, you can clearly see which angle is which. And uh, 
So, you know, honestly, there's really no, I mean, if you just sort of follow what I did here, write yourself a little program, there's no reason to ever get one of these problems wrong. Uh, because I gave you the tests. Right? So when you, whenever you write code, you should always verify your code. I mean, verify means you test it against some known solution. I'm, I gave you in the notes known solutions. Right? So you can write a little piece of code, test your code against the known solution, and then any other, any other problem I give you, It'll work. It's already been tested. So really, the only challenge on the homework is I'm going to give you a homework, and you're going to have to do some of these. And the only challenge is going to be figure out which angle is which. Right? Get the angles correct. And if you get the angles correct, it's a piece of cake. There's no excuse to get it wrong. Yeah, and you don't have to. I, I'm, the only reason I'm using Mathematica is because you know, I started off because I want to do the symbolic computations so that you can see that this matrix looked exactly like it did in the notes. And the only reason I'm using it is so that I can just, just copy and paste it and I don't have to type all that in. Otherwise, I would have done this in MATLAB. And, and you know, if you want to use MATLAB, it's fine. But yeah, the, the, the syntax here is that <coughs> I, this is the name of the function is RG, and these are arguments, OK? And the underscores just just tell you know whatever is in the function body, which is this part of the code, that those things with underscores you, you just pass them through. Right? You, they just whatever is there goes there. Th those are the arguments to the function, and then and then this is what's returned. It's pretty close, yeah. and pretty close. I mean, in MATLAB you. You, you, you know, you, over here you, you say what arguments are going to be returned, and then you say function something. Yeah. And it, of course, in MATLAB, and one reason one reason I sort of don't like it is uh, all your functions have to be in their own files, right? You have to have a function file. And this can be sort of annoying because good programming practices encourage really small functions. Right. If you have really small functions, they're easy to test. Right? You, notice, you notice when I define this second function, so I, I, this is a small function. It just computes the rotation matrix. This is another function that calls my first small function. Right? And the reason you know, good programming practice would be because I can test this in isolation. I can compute the rotation matrix first and know that it's correct. Right? And then once I test it and know it's correct, I can move on in my coding and, and always assume that if there's a future mistake in my code, it's not due to that. I've already tested that in isolation. Okay? And then as I continue on, I, I write more code. You know, it, I mean this is a pretty simple code, but if this code if this code were to produce a mistake, it wouldn't be because of that line. There's only one, and so there's only one other line in the code. So if this code were to produce a mistake, it would have to be due to this. So it makes debugging easier. Right? So good, pro, good coding practices encourage you to write small functions, which means in MATLAB, you have, you know, if you have small functions, you have 100 files in your, on your file system to write one program because, you know, because you have to have all these small. Whereas you know here in Mathematica and in Python and most other computing languages, you can you know, C, Fortran, whatever, you can have your functions in the same file as the rest of the code. Anyway.